Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of the Market Intelligence Coffee CrowdStrike Coffee Chat Series. My name is Marianne Antonelli, and I am the CrowdStrike Marketing Campaign Manager at TD Senex Public Sector. If you've been with us before, today is episode number five, and today's topic is for the public health and Fed space. If this is your first time, welcome, and thank you for attending this coffee chat. And please be sure to message us in the chat box if you'd like to access the previous episodes, and we'll get you hooked up. And just as a reminder, this is an exclusive webinar for the CrowdStrike's authorized resellers. Next slide, please. Before we get started, let's go over a few housekeeping items. Your lines are muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A or the chat field. Uh, this session will be recorded. And right before we conclude today's episode, please be on the lookout for a very short survey. Tell us how we did so we can make adjustments for future uh, coffee chat episodes. And as always, if you have any technical questions, please message Felicia directly into the chat. Next slide, please. And now a brief introduction for today's barista. Gabrielle Zegelboim is the Market Insights Data Analyst for the Market Insights team at TD Cynics Public Sector. Her time at TD Cynics has focused on leveraging quantitative and qualitative analysis of government IT procurement data to provide actionable insights to TD Cynics vendors and resellers in the public sector. She has a bachelor's degree in mathematics from Trinity University and prior to joining TD Cenex, worked as an actuarial analyst at a health insurance company. Gabrielle works remotely from Austin, Texas and likes to spend her free time playing board games. Now over to you, Gabrielle. Oh, you mute. Slide. We shall start by looking at an overview of public health. Healthcare is a major component of federal spending. In fact, in fiscal year 2023, it accounted for $1.9 trillion, or about 29% of federal spending. On a high level, key objectives of federal healthcare agencies include increasing healthcare accessibility and equity, improving user experience, improving collaboration and interoperability between different public healthcare agencies and between healthcare agencies and their public sector partners, and improving public health emergency preparedness and response. Additionally, healthcare agencies are looking to reduce costs. Felicia, next slide, please. Now, from a purely IT perspective, numerous healthcare agencies are overhauling their electronic health records. Many of those that are not overhauling their EHRs are still heavily investing into EHR maintenance or updates. Furthermore, despite some telehealth flexibilities set to expire with the end of the COVID-19 public health emergency, public health care agencies continue to have a really strong interest in enhancing their telehealth offerings. Other notable IT focuses of healthcare agencies include big data, which agencies see as useful throughout many of their objectives, from research to improving patient care, and cloud which agencies see as a useful cost-saving tool. Cloud solutions also facilitate interoperability and data exchange initiatives, both of which are significant focuses throughout public healthcare. Finally, healthcare agencies are starting to take notice of new consumer health technology, such as wearables, in the pursuit of health monitoring and data procurement. Now, let's take a look at some specific agencies within federal healthcare. Next slide, please. For our first agency, we will look at the Department of Health and Human Services. HHS's FY24 budget request included over $10 billion for IT, so HHS is definitely a major IT spender. The Department of Health and Human Services is working to improve access to electronic health information and medical care, and promote health data portability, interoperability, and data sharing among providers, patients, and healthcare financial organizations, such as insurance companies. Additionally, HHS struggles from a lack of standardized data governance practices across the organization and a highly siloed data ecosystem. Next slide. Now let's take a look at HHS through a purely cybersecurity lens. Cybersecurity is an important focus for the Department of Health and Human Services. 
The Department of Health and Human Services stores large amounts of health data and many of its components, such as the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, may even have HIPAA-protected, personally identifiable information. Therefore, it should be no surprise that HHS is requesting $947 million for cybersecurity in fiscal year 2024. In the upcoming fiscal year, HHS plans to incorporate cybersecurity practices throughout all stages of automated systems implementations, invest in modernizing security event logging, secure legacy systems against cyber threats, and invest in cyber threat intelligence and analysis, and FISMA and zero trust compliance. HHS needs to balance its interoperability, data sharing, and data accessibility goals with its need to ensure its data does not fall into the wrong hands. Adding to the importance of cybersecurity initiatives for the Department of Health and Human Services is the fact that last year, the Office of the Inspector General assigned the Department of Health and Human Services with a grade of D in a report on the department's FISMA compliance. The OIG report attributed several of HHS's failings to incomplete implementation of information security continuous monitoring. Additionally, OIG found HHS's contingency planning to be ineffective and recommended, among other changes, HHS continue to implement an enterprise-wide continuous diagnostics and mitigation solution. In light of this, when selling cybersecurity solutions to HHS, discuss how you can help the department with information security continuous monitoring, contingency planning, and continuous diagnostics and mitigation. HHS also faces cybersecurity challenges stemming from its highly federated IT environment. So when selling to the department, emphasize your ability implement your solutions in a federated enterprise architecture. Felicia, next slide, please. Before we move on, I want to take a quick look at the Department of Health and Human Services project landscape. On this slide, we have, to the left, a table containing the top IT contractors servicing the Department of Health and Human Services in fiscal year 2022, as well as the amount of money HHS gave to each of these contractors in fiscal year 22 in millions. To the right, we have the top contract vehicles HHS used for IT procurement in fiscal year 2022, as well as the amount of money it spent on each of those contract vehicles, once again in millions. Next slide, please. Moving on, let's take a look at some HHS components, starting with the Food and Drug Administration. FDA requested $24 million for IT modernization in fiscal year 2024. While that number may seem small, it's worth noting that a lot of FDA's IT modernization spending may be hidden behind other initiatives thanks to the agency's driver project focus. In accordance with its driver project approach to IT modernization, much of FDA's modernization work will occur as part of specific value-driven projects with immediate results. The modernization spending is still there, it's just hidden behind other programs. FDA's IT objectives include simplifying data acquisition, improving data quality and governance, and increasing model development and use, securing and scaling enterprise use of data, and implementing more automated systems in its data ecosystem. FDA also has a strong focus on artificial intelligence and machine learning in medical product development and testing, and is working to enhance its networks by transitioning to Internet Protocol version 6 and expanding the agency's use of software-defined networks. Next slide, please. Looking at cybersecurity specifically, FDA has requested $63 million for cybersecurity in fiscal year 2024. FDA's fiscal year 24 cybersecurity initiatives include its ICAM, or Identity Credential and Access Management, System Modernization, and Secure Access Service Edge, or SASE, Capability Transformation. As part of its ICAM modernization, FDA is producing a new ICAM solution for its applications and developing the underlying services necessary for implementing the new solution. FDA intends to implement its enhanced ICAM systems into its next generation electronic submissions gateway, which will see the agency's current electronic submissions gateway migrate to the cloud. FDA's SASE transformation will, as the name suggests, see FDA implement zero trust cybersecurity controls through a SASE architecture. By the way, FDA software-defined network initiative, mentioned earlier, also has a notable cybersecurity component. 
as FDA intends to develop a proof of concept for zero trust policy enforcement point for virtual routing as part of the initiative. Finally, FDA has to contend with an increasing number of network connected medical devices, which it needs to ensure are cyber secure before approving them for the market. When selling cybersecurity solutions to FDA, emphasize higher solutions can secure cloud-based applications and services, and emphasize higher solutions can complement security as a service systems. Furthermore, explain how it can help FDA implement AI and machine learning and its cybersecurity processes, especially in threat detection and response, and discuss higher solutions can help FDA test devices for cybersecurity vulnerabilities. Next slide. <clears throat> This slide presents the leading IT contractors along with the primary contracting vehicles used by the FDA, similar to the HHS contract landscape slide shown earlier. I will include this information and our look at the other agencies as well. Since we're pressed for time, I'll proceed without diving into the details here. However, you can refer to these slides later to identify the largest potential partners in each agency and the preferred procurement vehicles on your own, should you wish to. Next slide, please. Now, let's move on to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. CDC's fiscal year 2024 IT objectives include reducing siloing and modernizing its data, surveillance, and analytical infrastructure and capabilities, with a particular focus on improving systems which feed into the agency's health threat early warning system and public health emergency preparation and response. To that end, expect substantial investments in IT infrastructure centered around CDC's immunization and other respiratory diseases program, logistic solutions, disease monitoring initiatives, public health emergency related solutions like the response ready data integration platform and other programs designed to predict, prepare and respond to public health emergencies. Next slide. <clears throat> now let's move on to CDC cybersecurity outlook. CDC is requesting $77.5 million for cybersecurity in the upcoming fiscal year, a $550,000 increase over its fiscal year 23 enacted cybersecurity budget. Given the increased prevalence of cyber attacks during the COVID-19 pandemic and CDC's focus in improving its public health emergency preparation and response, expect CDC to be concerned with protecting its public serving operations from interruptions during a public health emergency. As CDC works to enhance its use and collection of real-time data, and migrate more solutions to the cloud, the agency will also need additional resources to secure its cloud services and ensure the security and reliability of its real-time data. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health Cybersecurity Initiative continues to be a relevant CDC cybersecurity program. In 2021, NIOSH found its dose reconstruction system could no longer be updated to meet the most up-to-date cybersecurity requirements, resulting in the agency pausing its radiation dose reconstruction until initial changes could be made. While NIOSH made the changes necessary to resume services within only a few months, it is still working to complete all its planned cybersecurity improvements. If you are selling cybersecurity solutions to CDC, you should definitely focus on how you can defend against interruption in service, especially during public health emergencies. Next slide, please. As before, we have CDC's contract landscape, Feel free to return here should you be interested in doing so. Next slide. For our next HHS component, we shall discuss the National Institute of Health. NIH has a strong focus on research, so expect NIH's IT needs to be centered more around big data. In fact, numerous big NIH programs, such as its All of Us Research Program and its Common Fund Data Ecosystem Program, require significant data-related IT resources. Furthermore, NIH awards many research grants, but has struggled with overseeing its grantees. So do mention if any of your IT solutions can help NIH ensure its grantees comply with federal regulations and provide the organization with timely, accurate data. Next slide. <clears throat> now let's move on to NIH cybersecurity. NIH is requesting $271 million for cybersecurity in fiscal year 2024, an increase of $4.25 million. The agency's cybersecurity goals include reducing its cyber attack service, improving NIH-wide continuous monitoring, risk mitigation, and incident response, and improving cybersecurity threat prevention, detection, and remediation. 
The Government Accountability Office has, in the past, found NIH's ability to identify cybersecurity risk and detect, respond, and recover from cyber incidents lacking making those particular areas of interest when selling cybersecurity capabilities to NIH. Additionally, according to the Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General, NIH struggles with ensuring its grantees maintain adequate cybersecurity solutions. When selling to the agency, you may, therefore, find additional traction if you discuss how you can help NIH ensure the security of its grantees in addition to the security of itself. NIH has a highly federated IT environment each NIH component has its own CIO who coordinates with the NIH CIO, and most NIH entities administer their own budgets. When selling cybersecurity solutions to the agency, talk about how you can help the agency ensure the security of all its components' IT systems, even if it lacks highly centralized control of its components' IT systems. Finally, please keep in mind that NIH has very recently decided to make the role of agency chief information officer separate from the role of the Director of the Center for Information Technology, or CIT. NIH intends for the CIT Director to focus on the IT systems supporting the agency's research and clinical operations, whereas NIH's CIO will focus on security standards and compliance. Therefore, when selling cybersecurity solutions to NIH, you want to focus more on the agency's CIO than its CIT Director. Next slide, please. Our next slide is another contract landscape slide. Feel free to return this slide if you want to look at this data. Next slide, please. For our final HHS component, we have the Indian Health Service. IHS serves a large geographically dispersed community, making telehealth a particularly significant interest for the agency. Furthermore, IHS sees open source technology as a valuable tool decrease infrastructure costs, and the agency has demonstrated serious deficiencies in its patient harm data practices. One particularly notable IHS IT initiative I want to highlight, by the way, is the agency's resource and patient management system, or RPMS modernization. Thanks to the agency's RPMS, relying on many components of the Department of Veteran Affairs VISTA system, which VA plans to sunset in the next few years, IHS needs to completely overhaul its RPMS, which will include creating an entirely new electronic health record system. Now, let's take a look at IHS cybersecurity. Next slide, please. IHS has requested $22.41 million for cybersecurity in FY 2024. In addition to using this money to reduce data loss risks, ransomware infections, identity theft, data breaches, and service interruptions, IHS is planning to add three new cybersecurity policies to its IT cybersecurity program, security assessment and authorization, audit and accountability, and configuration management. Furthermore, IHS is using a new cloud-based data integrator for log management, is acquiring solutions to enhance the security of domain joint endpoints, and is working to ensure the security of its new RPMS and EHR. When selling cybersecurity to IHS, Discuss how you can help the Indian Health Service balance equity, accessibility, and security, and explain how your solutions can be easily rolled out to various healthcare facilities. Next slide. Here is IHS's contract landscape. Felicia, next slide, please. Now, let's move on to the Department of Veteran Affairs. The FY 2024 presidential budget requests over $1.2 billion for health-specific IT for the department. Some of VA's FY 2024 IT goals include improving veterans' access to digital health information and services, increasing data integration, improving web application, mobile, and cloud-based platforms, and improving VA's health communications. VA also wants to improve information transfer between itself, its state partners, and its private healthcare partners, such as pharmacies. Like IHS, VA is transferring to a new electronic health record system, a process that is scheduled to complete in 2028. VA had been working on deploying the new system, but has since halted development to focus on improving their new EHR at the five sites where it is currently in use. The new system will improve interoperability between the Department of Veteran Affairs, the Department of Defense, the Coast Guard, and participating providers. Considering 
VA's FY24 IT objectives. When selling to VA, focus on how you can improve access to services and data and improve VA's use of data. VA wants to better connect with both its veteran clients and private sector pharmacy partners and other healthcare organizations, and it wants to address veteran access to services. Next slide, please. Another significant investment driving VA IT investment increases is, of course, cybersecurity. VA cybersecurity budget request is almost $11 billion for fiscal year 2024. VA wants to better address increasing cyber threats, improve its security incident management response, implement data loss prevention, and reduce IT vulnerabilities throughout its system. VA has also stated its FY 2024 cybersecurity goals are to secure and protect VA and veteran information, protect information systems and assets, leverage innovation to strengthen cybersecurity, enhance cybersecurity through partnerships and information sharing, and empower mission through cybersecurity risk management. In addition to VA's investments in reducing IT vulnerabilities throughout its IT systems with programs such as the VA Innovation and Research Review System Data Access Request Tracker Platform Migration, VA's initiative to address vulnerabilities in the Veterans Canteen Services Automated Information System, and VA's program to reduce the use of social security numbers in its IT systems. VA is making a substantial investment in its Cybersecurity Operations Center, our CSOC, in fiscal year 2024. VA plans to spend about $150 million on CSOC, with which it hopes will enable the center to identify cybersecurity risks and respond to and recover from cybersecurity incidents more quickly. Additionally, both the VA OIG and the Office of Management and Budget have noted VA faces numerous challenges in its program to meet FISMA requirements. OIG's report on VA's FISMA compliance in particular found VA needed to improve its cybersecurity access controls, configuration management controls, change management controls, and service continuity practices. Therefore, when selling to cybersecurity solutions to VA, discuss higher solutions can facilitate FISMA compliance. You may also find additional traction if you discuss how you can help VA integrate privacy and security controls or discuss how your products can easily be made to comply with privacy requirements. As VA has stated its struggles with applying privacy requirements to new products and integrating privacy and security controls. Finally, much of VA's cybersecurity budget is focused on operations and maintenance, so discuss how it can help VA maintain and improve its already existing systems. Next slide, please. Here we have VA's contract landscape. You can return here for, to look at this data should you wish. Felicia, next slide, please. Moving on, let's take a look at the IP interests of our final healthcare agency, the Defense Health Agency. DHA is one of the top defense agency IP spenders, especially in the areas of cloud computing, cybersecurity, big data, and mobile solutions. So there's plenty of IP opportunities. Much of DHA's IP plans are tied around MHS Genesis, the department's new electronic health record system. Even though DHA is actually requesting a spending decrease for MHS Genesis in fiscal year 24, on account of the program's transition from development to deployment, MHS Genesis continues to be one of DHA's largest IT priorities. Next slide, please. Finally, we, look, take, we conclude our look at cybersecurity with the Defense Health Agency. DHA is requesting $152 million for cybersecurity in fiscal year 2024, representing an increase of about $12 million. Unlike other healthcare agencies, as a member of both the public health and defense basis, DHA needs to comply with both healthcare and defense cybersecurity regulations. DHA also needs to ensure MHS Genesis is secure as it deploys the new electronic health record system. DHA is focused on and securing its networks from cyber attacks, especially in regards to cyber attacks using network medical devices as vectors and protecting the military health system networks from ransomware. When selling to DHA, make sure to emphasize any experience you have in both the healthcare and defense spaces and discuss how you can help integrate information security and risk management into the system development lifecycle. Felicia, next slide, please. Here's our final contract landscape slide, this time for DHA. Next slide, please. 
To conclude our presentation, I want to provide a few more suggestions for vendors when selling to public health agencies. If you can, try to emphasize any cost savings your solutions can provide, as well as how you can facilitate data exchange or interoperability. Furthermore, explain how your solutions can improve ease of use for providers, patients, and the IT personnel implementing your solutions. Stress if your solutions integrate with other products common in the healthcare space as well. Furthermore, healthcare agencies have access to plenty of data and are continuing to look into ways to further expand the data they have at their disposal. You should mention any benefit you can provide in data analysis, visualization, storage, or acquisition. Emphasize your solution's compliance with federal regulations and make sure to demonstrate to these agencies that you have a clear understanding of all relevant requirements. Demonstrating an understanding of government procurement can also help here as some of these regulations apply throughout the federal government as opposed to just in the healthcare space. Finally, remember that healthcare is an ever-developing space and a growing market. Make it clear you are on top of new trends, such as network-connected medical devices, wearable health monitors, and more. Okay, over to you, Matthew. Great, thank you, appreciate that, great information. Um, yes, I just wanna go ahead and thank everybody for attending this coffee chat. And if you have any questions for our market intelligence team, please direct all the questions to marketintelligence at dlt.com and any sales-related questions to the CrowdStrike alias here at CrowdStrike at DLT.com. Uh, as a reminder, the next coffee chat will be Thursday, September 14th, which will be episode six, Public Health for SLED. You can register at DLT.com slash CrowdStrike. As Marianne alluded to earlier, you will see, if you haven't already, a post-webinar survey. Please be sure to take that so we can get that feedback from you. And be sure to uh, keep a lookout in your email inboxes for the Starbucks gift card for attending. Thank you, everybody. Okay, everybody, if you if you have any questions whatsoever, please drop it in the Q&A and we'll be sure to answer it. Let's see if there's any questions coming in. All right, let's see, I have one here. Okay, there's a question here that says, are there any new technologies that are becoming significant in federal healthcare? So um, that's a good question. Um, so, you know, as I stated earlier, um, wearables and other network connected devices, you know, are becoming uh, much more relevant. Um, they can provide healthcare agencies with a lot of data um, and provide patients with new healthcare services. Um, but they also create an additional endpoint, which may act as a vector for larger cyber attacks on healthcare networks. Wearables in particular um, are really still more of a consumer space thing right now, but they are definitely gaining recognition in um, the federal healthcare space. We're not exactly at the stage where DHA is handing out smartwatches to service members um, if we ever get there, but the agency is definitely starting to take note of them. Um, healthcare agencies are, you know, um, like everyone else right now, uh, looking into AI. Um, I believe HHS actually recently released a document on cybersecurity and AI um, in which the department briefly touched upon how to protect AI systems from cyber threats. Um, departments are also looking at AI for penetration testing, uh, continuous monitoring and threat detection, and incident handling. Likewise, AI is having a bit of a field day with fraud detection and response. It's really speeding up claim processing quite a bit and helping agencies with their claim backlogs um, as well which, you know, is good for agencies like uh, VA, CMS, et cetera. Um, there are also some other technologies that healthcare is just starting to dabble in, like uh, virtual and augmented reality. Um, you know, VR and HR has seen some use in training doctors, of course, but um, it's also being used more in creatively uh, to lay medical imagery over a patient's body, for instance, uh, you know, X-ray or MRI information over a patient's body are using VR to help patients understand their medical conditions by transporting them into their own bodies. Um, the VR and HR healthcare market, I think if I remember correctly, is already worth something over maybe $2.5 billion. Um, you know, I think VA is actually looking into VR for physical therapy right now as well. Um, so that's another place where that's coming in handy. So we'll see how that develops. Um, any other questions? Yep, I, I have. One more question here. Uh, what are some non-healthcare initiatives that will impact the federal health space with regards to IT? Um, let me think for a moment. Okay, so 
You know, that's, that's also a good question. Um, a lot of healthcare agencies like the Department of Veteran Affairs and the Indian Health Services um, are trying to care for a really spread out group of uh, people. Um, in VA's case, you know, many people, veterans have uh, mobility impairments, which altogether creates a situation where logically telehealth would be, you know, a good solution. But um, many of these departments treat patients who live in more remote areas um, and have access to maybe not as good internet connectivity. Um, and so this federal push we've seen lately uh, for broadband expansion uh, is really making these telehealth efforts uh, a lot easier. Um, furthermore, you know, research agencies, DOE, that sort of thing, um, are always working on new science and technologies, which can have a direct impact on healthcare, um, new AI systems and drug development, et cetera. Uh, DOE also has, you know, its supercomputer initiatives and a lot of other agencies in healthcare uh, and beyond um, rely on DOE supercomputers for a lot of their own modeling. Um, NIH and whatnot, you know, will take time from uh, DOE supercomputers to run research models and the like. Any other questions? Let's see, I think one more came in. Um, what are some particularly interesting developments in cyber attacks that we need to be aware of? Let me think. So, so that, that's actually a cool question. Uh, it's kind of, you know, the, the dark side of the, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about here, um, you know, as we've seen, um, ransomware and other forms of malware are becoming, you know, easier to access for the average person uh, with malicious intent. Uh, you know, now we have open source malware solutions and people can just buy ransomware off the market to send to targets without really needing any technical skills themselves. Um, generative AI, uh, likewise, is just like it's being used uh, for good in cybersecurity, is also being used for bad. Um, it has potential use in um, malware creation and deployment. Um, AI can write phishing emails, help develop malware, automate cyber attacks, speed up reconnaissance, and so on. Um, plus, since you know AI can make malicious tools for people who may not have the technical skills uh, to make the tools on their own, it's also adding to that uh, factor of these malware tools becoming more readily accessible to um, the average person allowing the average person, uh, lowering the bar of entry for cybercrime really, um, which is one of the reasons we're seeing all these uh, increased uh, number of uh, cyber attacks. Um, do you have any other questions? Let's see, I, I'm not seeing any more, uh, calling once, twice. Okay, I think that is all I have for today. Gabriel, thanks everyone for coming and uh, we'll see you at the next coffee chat. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.